Hello, beautiful humans. It's my pleasure to share with you today the continuous join as you go method of joining motifs for the Island Time shawl. So if you're familiar with the Island Time blanket, it's almost essentially the same. There are a few minor adjustments we've had to make because it's a triangle shape rather than a rectangle, but I'm sure you'll figure it out real quick here. So I've made a few of these large somber centers here and I'm gonna show you how I join them up. Then afterwards, we're going to use the join as you go method to separately join in our sunburst triangles or our little half circles here um, to give you that flat edge to the shawl. So I'm gonna be using the same yarn that I used in the sample pattern. Um, this one is Ravenswood Fiber Co. DK Weight in the color Ocean's Dawn. Um, and then I have the creamy white color here, which is Swish Bear DK Weight from Knit Picks. The motifs were made using a four and a half millimeter hook, but for the join, pay attention to the written pattern here because we actually go down half a hook size to four millimeters. Um, I did this just to give it a tighter look, but also to hold its shape better when you're wearing it. It's not essential to go down half a hook size. I just felt it was a tighter, nicer look. Um, but do keep in mind that if you don't end up going down half a hook size, you'll end up using more yarn than what the pattern calls for. So let's get started, shall we? I'm going to actually grab my four millimeter hook because I didn't pull it out, silly me. Rattle, rattle, rattle in the background. Okay, so I have my four millimeter hook to do the join and I've drawn a little diagram here. So in the assembly portion of the written pattern, it says to start in the top right corner and to join across your top row here using the continuous join as you go. Now it's more of like a segmented continuous join as you go. Um, if you're familiar with continuous join as you go, um, how many times can I say it? <laughs> then you know that you work across your row and then you come back along the bottom of your squares and then you zip down to the next row and go across, right? You snake your way up and down, up and down, up and down, and then you come back across. But for this one, because it's a triangle shape, we actually have to just finish off every single row. So instead of, you know, working all of the triangles all the way down and then coming back up the sides, it doesn't really work that way. So we're going to start in our top right corner. We're going to work across the top, down the side, join the next one, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. We're going to come all the way back across the bottom of all of those motifs and then up that little side and we're going to finish off that row entirely. Okay, so we're going to complete that whole row. And then we're going to skip down and in one square and we're going to join our next ones, okay? So we're going to use the continuous method to do the next row, up, down, up, down, up, down, zip all the way back along the bottom, and then up that final side there and complete that row all together, okay? And we'll just do that until we've done the entire shawl. Obviously, it's a lot wider than what my picture is here. I just drew a quick little diagram for the video until you get to the last two motifs down at the very bottom. Okay, once you've joined up all of your main centers, your main starburst, sunburst centers, then you're going to put on your triangles. So you'll put your triangle on the end over here, and then one in here, one in here, 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 and then down at the bottom, you put your triangle, your triangle to create that point of the shawl, and then back up the side over here. Okay, and you just join each of those ones separately. So it's really, really easy. I'm going to show you anyways, um, just because I wanted it to be very clear and because not everybody's made the blanket. So if you're coming straight here and you've not made the blanket, then you're not going to have any clue what I'm talking about. Correct? Correct. <laughs> so we are going to start with a slip knot on our hook. And I'm going to only join up three centers because that should just give us enough information to be able to put the whole thing together. So we start with a slip knot on our hook and we're going to join in any of the, oh, sorry. We're not going to start with a slip knot. Getting ahead of myself here. We're going to insert our hook into any of the chain three spaces. Okay, so we're just going to insert, place your yarn over the hook, 
you're going to yarn over both of those tails and pull through. If you want to start with a slip knot and join your yarn that way, you absolutely can. There's no real right or wrong way. This is just how I do it. Okay, and we're going to chain three. Um, if you've joined the way I have, you're only going to chain two because this first this first one here counts as a join and a chain. So I have one, two, three. Okay, if you're joining with a slip knot, you're going to chain three. And then we are going to work our first corner. So we are doing four trebles. So we're going to do yarn over twice. And we're going to put three trebles in because this first chain three counted as our first treble. Okay. Okay, so I've made my, my treble stitches here. I've got one, two, three, four total chain two and then work the other four trebles into that same space. Obviously, I'm assuming that you know all of your basic stitches and I'm not gonna spend time going over how to make trebles. Um, if I am going too fast, however, if you tap on the screen, uh, three little dots should appear up here, I believe it is, and you can slow down the playback speed of the video. Okay, so in our next chain three space, we are going to put four double crochets. And then in our next chain three space, four half double crochets. So essentially all we're doing is completing round five of the granny square, but also while, content, while joining all of them together. So it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. So in our next chain three space, we're gonna be putting four double crochets, if I can get it here. There we go. And then in the next chain three space, we're gonna be working our second corner. So we're gonna put four trebles, chain two, four trebles. Chain two, grab more yarn. <laughs> and then four more trebles into that same space to create our second corner here. three, put my last one in. Okay, and I'm just going to show you what we've done. So I've started in the top right corner, okay, and I've worked across the top to turn it into a square here, and I've got my second corner over here. We're now going to work down the side, and we're going to do half of the corner down here, and then we're going to join our next motif, all right? <laughs> just so you can get yourself oriented because I know when we're working on them, you end up twisting them all over the place and working upside down and sideways and it's kind of hard to keep up sometimes. Okay, so we're gonna work down the side of our square or would-be square. So we're gonna put in four double crochets, four half double crochets and four double crochets, all right? And if you want, you can do three, okay, shells of three. So these are generally called granny shells, right? We're just turning them into a granny square at this point. So if you want, typically granny squares are three stitches, right? I just do four because it fills it in and makes it look nice and solid. It gives it a more um, closer look because the large sunbursts really open up and you end up getting these larger holes, I found that it is nice to have that fourth, that extra stitch in your granny shells. So you can do it, it'll work out with three, if you'd like. It'll just give it a more open look. That's the only difference. Okay, so I've done my shells along the side here and now I'm going to work the first half of this third corner here. So I'm going to put in four treble stitches. Okay. 
Okay, then I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to just pull back and show you what I've done here. Okay, so that's where we are. Now we're going to join our next motif right over here. So we're going to join and do the first half of this corner and go up the side, across the top and down. All right. So I've chained one. Now I'm going to do what's called a standing treble crochet or a standing stitch. So I'm going to yarn over twice, insert my hook into any of the chain spaces on our new motif, okay? Making sure my yarn is behind me here. I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now we have joined that with a treble, okay? Now I'm going to insert my hook from front to back into this very first stitch right here, okay? So basically all I'm doing is slip stitching all the way up this square while completing the sides of this one. That's all it is, no trickery whatsoever. So I slip stitch and then I do my treble over here. And then I slip stitch into the next stitch over here, front to back, yarn over twice and do your treble over here. Okay, slip stitch into the next stitch and finish off your fourth treble in that corner, okay? You pull back and that's what you have. And so you just follow along with the same stitch pattern. So I'm actually not going to go into the top of this stitch. I like to go into the space. Okay. It does not matter. I just like using the space, but you can just keep to all the stitches to the tops of the stitches if that is less confusing for you. Okay. And now I'm going to do four double crochets. slip stitching as I go, okay, slip stitch, double crochet, slip stitch, double crochet. I've got my four double crochets in my spot here, so now I'm going to go into the space. So I'm going to go into the space between the four double crochets and the four half double crochets over here. Get it to lie flat so you can actually see where I'm going. <laughs> so I'm going to go into that space. Again, you can go into the top of the stitch if you, if you prefer. It does not matter. will not make a difference. And now I'm going to do my four half double crochets, right? So I start with my first one, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet. Okay, so I've got my four stitches in there. Now I'm going to go into my space between the, the granny shells. And now we're back on the double crochets. So I'm going to work my first double crochet, slip stitch, double crochet, slip stitch. Nice and easy. There's absolutely no reason that you can't all be doing this. I know it looks super intimidating, but it's not. It's very simple, guys. Very, very simple. Okay. And it creates this really beautiful braided effect. Okay. You can get that same effect by just doing all of your round five um, separately. Okay. And then you can use the, what's called the zigzag slip stitch to join them together. And that will give you the same braided effect, but keep in mind, you're then doing the fifth round on every single motif and sewing in all of those ends. And then you're slip stitching all of those together and sewing in all of those ends. So this saves you time it saves you yarn, and it saves you sewing, okay? It's so much more simpler to do it this way. I promise you it's life-changing. 
So I've done my four double crochets over here. Now I need to work my corner, right? We're on our corner stitches. So I'm gonna start with my first treble over here and I'm gonna work the first half of this corner. So I'm gonna slip stitch, treble, slip stitch, treble. Until I've got my four. Okay, so I've got my four stitches here, the first half of this corner on my working square. Now I'm going to, you'll see that there's one last stitch here. Instead of going into the top of that stitch, I'm gonna skip over it and just go into the corner. Okay, because I want my corners to be nice and tight. If you go into the top of that stitch, then it ends up pulling a little bit and it doesn't look as clean. So I just kind of skip that last one and go into the corner chain one and I'm going to finish off this corner with four trebles. Okay now we're not joining anything obviously so we're just going to work our stitches the way we would normally. Okay so that's joined up really nice. On the back side you have a very clean finish, very plain. Okay, so it's perfect for garments, even blankets. This is exactly how I joined all my blankets too. Now we're gonna do our top of the square over here. So we're just doing our four double crochets. Okay, and then our four half double crochets. Four double crochets, and then we have to work our corner over here. So we do our four trebles, chain two, four trebles. Oops, lost that one. chain two and then I'm going to twist and do the remainder four trebles in that same space to finish off the corner. And I'm going to go down the side with my four double crochets okay and then my four half double crochets And then four double crochets. And I'm just whizzing along here because I'm not showing you anything different, right? We're just working the sides of a square, how we would normally do. And now we're gonna work our corner. So we're gonna work the first half of this corner with four trebles. And then I'm gonna pull back and we're going to talk about it a little bit. <laughs> Chain one. Okay. So let's get ourselves oriented here. Now, obviously, our shawls are a lot wider than two motifs across, right? So I believe in the pattern off the top of my head, you would think that I would know because I literally just made it. But what is it? 14 motifs across. So you're going to keep joining your motifs each way the same that we did this one over here. Okay. So you chain one and then you do your standing treble and join your next square up over the side, back down, half the corner, chain one, standing treble, and the next, and the next, and the next. Okay, so you're gonna do all 14, I believe it is. I really hope I'm not wrong. <laughs> all the way across, okay? And once you get all the way across, we're gonna pretend like I have 14 here. You're going to flip it over and we're going to finish the bottoms because you'll notice we have some naked bottoms over here. Can't have naked bottoms. And I think that's what I'm going to refer to them as from now on. <laughs> naked bottoms. <laughs> so 
I have my first half of the corner and I'm going to make sure that I have a chain two, just like in a regular corner. And I'm going to finish off all of the bottoms of these motifs. So I start by finishing off this corner, right? So that means I put in four treble crochet stitches. And then I bet you can guess what goes in these ones, right? The same as all the other sides. So we do our four double crochet, four half double crochet, four double crochet, and then you're gonna work, we only have half a corner here, right? So it makes sense that we're gonna put four trebles in. And then there's some trickery that happens over here. So let's get to it. It's a little bit of magic happens. So let's do four double crochet. four half double crochet. Make sure you're working over those tails, eh? Four, oh, oh, four double crochet. Okay, now I've come to my corner and I wanna finish my corner with four half doubles, or sorry, four trebles, goodness. Excuse me. <laughs> and now I'm going to chain one. Now, you'll remember that when we were coming across and joining our motifs, we did a chain one before we put in our standing treble over here, right? This is when I bid you good luck. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's not that bad. You're going to jam your hook into the bottom here, okay? There is a chain one. Now we get to find it, okay? See that teeny tiny hole? That's a chain one and we're going to slip stitch. Okay, chain one. And we're going to finish the rest of this corner with four trebles. And this is the fun part. I love coming back across the bottom of all of the joined motifs. I just feel like you just really breeze through it and I don't know, it's the fun part. <laughs> so I'll pull back and show you what we did. So we have completed corners that are joined. See that? And you just do the exact same thing across the bottom, okay? So you finish your half of the corner, chain one, slip stitch, chain one, do your corner stitches. Okay, all the way back across the bottom. So four double crochet, four half double crochet and eventually you will come to the very last motif or the very first I should say because we're upside down right we're working our way back to the beginning technically okay so once you get back across all 14 squares you're back at the first one where we started we have our starting corner here we're gonna work that very last corner Okay, we don't have a corner here at all, so we have to do four trebles, chain two, four trebles. And remember, we are finishing off this row completely. So I'm gonna go back up the side here. If it were a blanket, you would actually just do half and then you would start joining your next row. But because I have to go in one motif because we're putting a triangle here to create a shawl shape, I can't, there's no way to do that. <laughs> so we're just going to complete our row entirely by going back up the side and all you do is put in your four double crochet, four half double crochet, four double crochet, 
right? No, no fanciness here, just straight up making a square. Okay, and we did this full corner, so all I have to do is slip stitch into the top of my first treble, not into the chain three, okay? Slip stitch to join, and then you're going to cut your yarn. So you have a row of joined motifs, okay, and you would sew in that end. I'm not going to because I don't know why. Yes, I will. Here we go. I'm gonna just take it apart anyways to save this gorgeous yarn, right? So I'm gonna thread my needle, but I'll show you, I'll show you. <laughs> I'm going to go down these ones right here, right through the center of the back loops here. Okay, all the way down. Grab these ones here too. And I'm going to go into the back of these stitches towards my starting tail. Thread in your starting tail. Oops. They're sticking to me. The yarn is sticking to me. My hands are all clammy. It's the worst. It's summertime, so it's like really muggy, humid. And I just split the ply and go back and forth a couple times. Okay? Just like that. A lot of people ask me how I sew in my ends, and I always, always, always try and find a corner. And I go back and forth, splitting the ply a couple times. I never, like, snake my way through these stitches. So a lot of people ask how mine are so well hidden, and um, they don't poke through or ruin the stitches here. And it's because I've woven them in, I've woven those tails into the back loops of those stitches, and then I just work around them and then when I do have to sew I sew into a corner okay back and forth that's the most secure way of doing it if you're weaving it in all over the place and snaking it all around it's eventually going to come out when you pull and twist and wear it ends up snaking its way out and coming undone and you have little loose ends coming all over the place don't do that please please don't do that okay and then all of these obviously now that I've worked over them, I can cut them off. Worked over these, snip, snip, and that's that's it, right? That's how you get away with not sewing in a bajillion ends. Okay, so we have our entire row of 14 pretending. I've got our pretending hats on, and now I'm going to start my next row. I have to go in one square. Remember we have our little diagram here. Okay, so I've done my whole row across. Now I'm going in one because we're going to put a little triangle here. That's what all of our little half moons were for. So grab our yarn again and we are going to do essentially the exact same thing. So we're going to start in any of the chain spaces on your motif. Okay to make a corner here. Wow, it's a lot quieter when that air conditioning isn't running, isn't it? And I'm going to do one side, okay, before doing anything with our previous row. So I'm just going to work one side as per normal. So I'm going to do this whole corner, okay? So four trebles, chain two, four trebles. Oops, oops, oops. There we go. And then across the top, the four double crochet, four half double crochet, four double crochet. Oh dear, it keeps slipping off on me. Here we go. Oh.
Okay, and now I'm gonna work the first half of this corner, okay? So just half. So put in four trebles and chain one. Chain one. And I'm going to go in one motif to create that stair-like effect. And into the corner here, this corner over on our diagonal motif, I'm going to slip stitch. Okay. Chain one. And we are going to finish this treble like so. Okay, so now, oh, don't want to lose it. Hang on, hang on. There we go. So now I've joined to my diagonal motif. Always try to join to the diagonal motif if there is a diagonal, okay? If there isn't a diagonal and you're just on like the end of a row, then don't worry about it. Now I'm going to go this way, okay? So I'm going to finish the top of this motif while joining it to this one. So we're gonna slip stitch along the bottom here. We're gonna go into that first stitch, slip stitch, and do my corner. Slip stitch, do my corner stitch. Slip stitch, do my corner stitch, treble. Okay, then I'm going to go into the space between our granny clusters. Okay, again, you can go into the top of the stitch, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to start with my double crochets. Okay, so I've done one, slip stitch, two, slip stitch, three, slip stitch, four. Okay, slip stitch between your granny shells over here and then do your half doubles. So I'll do my first one, slip stitch, second one, slip stitch, third, slip stitch, and fourth. Okay, you can see that coming along there. I'm gonna slip stitch into our space between the shells there and we are now on double crochets again so we're going to do our first double crochet slip stitch second double crochet slip stitch third slip stitch <laughs> fourth and now we're going to slip stitch into the space okay and now we're ready to do the first half of our corner over here. So I'm going to do a treble. Slip stitch, treble. Slip stitch, treble. Now I'm going to go into my corner here, okay, so that we have a nice tight corner. Now I guess I technically should have joined a third motif to show you that we would go into our diagonal motif. So we will have another square here obviously because we have an entire row of squares. So you slip stitch into the one beside and then you slip stitch into the one beside that which is your diagonal motif to this one, okay? If you forget to go into this diagonal motif, the invisible one that is right here, then your corners will start falling apart on you. Okay, so always make sure that you're going beside and then over to the diagonal. Okay, and then you chain one. Chain one from your diagonal over here. And then finish off this corner. When you get to the end of your row and you have no more to join it to, obviously you're just going to go to the diagonal and finish off, right? Because there's, there's going to be a step on that side as well, right? You're in one. 
So you finish off this corner here with four trebles. And then you just go down the side. You're just going to work your sides as you would normally. Gonna finish my corner here. And again, you're working across the whole row, so you would do your half corner, chain one, and you would join. Let's pretend like there is a motif up here. Okay, pretend that there's a square here. So you would join your new motif over here, right, with your standing treble. Work up the side, slip stitch into this corner, and then slip stitch into your diagonal corner. And then you work your trebles the rest of your corner here while slip stitching to the bottom of this one. Okay? So no more free passes. You can't just zip along the top. You have to work along the bottom of this one and then down the side. And then up the side, corner, join cross <laughs> okay <laughs> it is very easy like there's nowhere else to go basically when you get there you just keep following it along right so you come you join slip stitch up the side slip stitch into your corner slip stitch into your diagonal finish your treble stitch okay and then you start slip stitching into the base of this square and going across the top and bottom of these motifs okay then, once you get to the end of all of the second row, you flip it upside down and you go across the whole bottom. And you go across the bottom exactly like you did before. Nothing different there. You finish off all your bottoms and you get all the way back to the starting motif. And you slip stitch and finish, fasten off. And if you can't visualize it, or if you're still confused, there is a basic granny square tutorial that I have, the join as you go method. Um, and it was for the pixel perfect shawl. Maybe I'll link it down below, um, just so you can see, because I did do a third motif, and so it shows the corners of that one being done. And it might just help you visualize it a little bit better. Okay, so I've come along the bottom of my entire row two, and now I'm just going to slip stitch it to that beginning there. Okay, so obviously you're going to have a long row and then a step in, okay? But we're just going with this for now because the important part is how we join our triangles, okay? So I wanted to create a little step here so we're going to join our first triangle to make that corner of the shawl. So I take my motif, my half large sunburst, if you will. Okay, and we're going to join it here. So I'm going to take my joining yarn and I'm going to insert between our chain four and that first cluster stitch. Place the yarn over your hook, pull through, yarn over both those tails. You're going to chain a total of four. Okay, I'm going to chain up three because my join was considered the first chain. But if you join with a slip stitch, make sure you're joining up four. Okay. And I'm going to work across the top of this. So if we put it here, this is the edge of our shawl. So we have nothing to join here. We just have to get to our first corner. Okay, see that? So I'm going to go across and create the straight edge of my triangle here. 
So I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to put in four trebles, which is half of a corner. And then in the next space, I'm going to put four double crochets. In the next space, four half double crochets. In the next space, four double crochets. Okay, so we have that top edge of the triangle here. And then in this next space, I'm gonna work the first half of the corner. So I'm gonna do four treble crochets. And I'm going to chain one. And now I'm going to join it. So I'm going to join it to this top corner here with a slip stitch. Okay, kind of twist your work upside down. It works better that way. And then chain one. And then you're going to finish off the four trebles in here, okay, into that same space. Oops, no you're not. <laughs> what am I doing? You do your first one, then you got a slip stitch. Silly me. Okay, so I've worked my first stitch and we've got our corner joined, right? Now we have to do the exact same thing we did all along the other blanket, the rest, or the blanket, the rest of the shawl. So used to making blankets. <laughs> so we're gonna slip stitch into this stitch here Work your treble, slip stitch, treble, slip stitch, and treble. Okay, you see that coming together there? Into our space between the granny clusters, slip stitch. And then you're going to work your double crochets. So your first one, slip stitch, your second one, slip stitch, third, slip stitch, fourth. Okay, then you're going to slip stitch between your clusters here, or clusters, your granny shells. Do your first half double crochet, slip stitch, second half double crochet, slip stitch. Just keep going down. So that's my fourth one. And then I'm going to slip stitch between my granny shells here. Now we're back on double crochets. First one. Second one, slip stitch, third one, fourth one, slip stitch between your shells there. And now we get to do our corner. So on our triangle, it's going to be between this last cluster stitch and the double crochet, or the treble crochet, I guess. Okay. So you're going to insert into that space, work your stitch, slip stitch, work your treble, slip stitch, work your treble, and slip stitch, work your treble. So I've got the first half of that corner. Now we want to slip stitch into the corner because remember we want our corners to be nice and tight. Okay, I'm not going to chain one. Normally you would chain one. I'm not going to because I want this edge to be nice and flush. So I'm just going to work a treble into that space. Okay, no chaining there. I'm just going to fasten that off. If you chain one, then you end up having like a little gap. 
okay? We don't want any gaps. We want this to be a nice, straight, flat edge. Otherwise, then you have to put a border on it, and I didn't want to put a border on it. <laughs> I wanted it to be nice and clean. Okay, so let's see what we did. We created the corner of our shawl. How fun is that? Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing down here. We're gonna put in another triangle to create that side. Okay, so we're gonna grab our next one. And of course you would sew in these ends, right? So we're gonna take our needle, go into the back, down the back of that stitch here, and then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then you're done, snip it off. So we've got our second would-be triangle. We're going to join between our chain four and our cluster here, just like we did in the previous one. Okay, chain four. And we are going to slip stitch in between these two stitches. Okay, so you've got your four, and then there was a fifth one here, remember? So we're gonna slip stitch into this space. Okay, just like so, because it's technically our diagonal, right? We always wanna go into our diagonal. And then I'm going to yarn over twice and do our first treble of the corner. And then I'm going to go into the first stitch here, the top of this first stitch in the corner. Okay. And work another treble. Slip stitch another treble. Slip stitch and another treble. And I'm just going to pull back and show you what we've done. So this triangle is a little bit different because we start right away by attaching that top side. Up here, it was, it was a naked side. Over here, we have to start slip stitching to this bottom motif right away, right? That's the only difference. So you're going to slip stitch in between your granny shells here. And then we're on our double crochets. So we do our first one, slip stitch. Second one, and then in between our shells here, and then we're our half double crochets. So you're just slip stitching, half double crocheting. <laughs> I think this is going to be a record. I think this will be my longest tutorial yet. Let me tell you, it's not easy to talk this long without having a sip of anything. slip stitching and crocheting along here. So we've come to our corner, right? So we've done our doubles, half doubles, doubles. And now we're gonna do our first set of trebles. And this will actually give you a pretty good idea of what you are supposed to do when you get to the four corner situation. So I'm done my half corner here. I'm going to slip stitch into this one so that I have a nice tight corner, right? Nice and tight. And then I go into my diagonal, which is technically right beside it because I've slip stitched into here. So now I'm just gonna slip stitch into there. Chain one, okay? Yarn over twice and then work your treble. and then I'll pull back and show you what we've done. Okay, so let's get situated here. So here we are. We've joined this triangle, get the loop out of the way. We went into this one beside, and then we went into the diagonal right beside. So boop, boop. 
Okay, then we're gonna work back down this side here and just finish off the rest of that triangle. Boop, boop, did you get that? <laughs> Sometimes, I don't know. Okay, slip stitching into the first corner stitch over here and we're gonna finish off our corner on our triangle. So slip stitching and treble crocheting. Slip stitch. Okay. And then we're going to go into our space between the shells and then we're on our double crochets. So double crochet, slip stitch, double crochet, slip stitch, double crochet, slip stitch. Last one. There we go. And then we're going to go in between our shells. like so, and then you're on your half double crochets, right? Easy peasy, right guys? It's a little easy to get lost when you're first starting because the orientation is all over the place. So it looks really confusing and really intimidating, but it really isn't. You just kind of go where you have to go. Once you start doing it, it's one of those things where once you do it, then you're like, oh, there's nowhere else for me to go, so I must go this way. <laughs> if that makes sense. Ay, ay, ay. I know I was very intimidated by this process in the beginning. I didn't want to try it. And then I finally did, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's life-changing. <laughs> I will never join my squares any other way ever again. Okay, so we have made it to the tip of the triangle. So we are going to go in between our cluster here and that treble crochet. So we're going to work into that space, slip stitch, treble into the space, slip stitch, space, Okay, now we want to have nice tight corners, right? Nice tight flush corners. So we're gonna slip stitch into our corner. We are not going to chain anything. We're just gonna yarn over twice and complete our final treble into that space. Fast enough. On to the next. But that's it for this tutorial. So see if I can kind of lift my camera up here and get a better shot. There we go. So there we have it, okay? That's your edge. You see once you get your tail sewn in that it ends up being a really nice straight edge. Like obviously this isn't blocked. Once you get it blocked, it ends up being absolutely stunning. So works out really, really well. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it isn't, give me a shout out, okay? I am available all the time to answer any questions. Happy crocheting, guys.